shit. Oops. Us and, and the collaboration we're going to have going forward. No better way to communicate to your audience. How do we grow strategically now that we've gotten the right path forward? And we're live. Tyler, I appreciate you being here today. So I want to introduce Tyler Gibson. I'm Todd Schroth here with Agents Who Win, and Tyler is our guest today on the show. Um, Tyler's coming to us with a background in investments and working with real estate investors. So Tyler, you know, I appreciate you being on here today. And you also like were on the top 20 last year, weren't you? Um, yeah. On, on YPN as a part-time agent. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. Yeah. yeah. Last year I was, uh, I was named, uh, by the young professional network here in Orlando as one of the top 20 rising star realtors. And at the time of receiving that award, I still had a full-time salary job. So imagine like if you put full effect into it, you'd be in like the top five instead of the top 20. Yeah, well, that was kind of the idea, uh, which is why in October of 2021, which is uh, about two months after, uh, I don't even think it was two months. I think it was about uh, a month after the award was actually given out. Uh, I quit my full-time job and, and made this my full-time gig, uh, helping people buy real estate and sell real estate. And yeah, that's perfect. So Let's just back up a little bit. So how long have you been in the business? Uh, so I started in October 2019. Okay. So you got in right before COVID hit. And then you were like, all right, this is great. The ramp up. And then all of a sudden the world's coming to an end. And all of a sudden the world like came to an end, but re-exploded. And like, you know, we're all trying to figure out what's, you know, what's next. Um, now, what were you doing before? Yeah. So uh, in 2019, uh, I actually, tra- in May of 2019, I transitioned into... Uh, a new job. Uh, no, is that right? Yeah, I had, it, it was May 2019. I transitioned into a new job working for a company called the Marcus Buckingham Company. Um, they were owned by ADP, the big payroll company, and I essentially was an account manager with them. Um, what they the the product that they sold and uh, kind of the the vision statement of the company um, actually had a huge impact on my decision to leave and go into real estate full time. Uh, Marcus Buckingham is a world renowned researcher um, and he wrote uh, a a personality test of sorts called the strengths assessment, the standout strengths assessment. And uh, it helps people identify their top two strength roles. And uh, I I got to take it when I started working there and I got to get into their coaching program and uh, it changed my life to focus on my strengths and things that I was passionate about. And uh, so really, Really, actually, very thankful for that opportunity at that job. And prior to that, I worked for a software company, implement traveling and implementing a land records management system. So deeds, mortgages, marriage licenses, all those public documents that get recorded at your county clerk. Uh, I was implementing the software that the clerk uses in order to scan those, index them, and make them publicly searchable. So you're kind of involved in real estate just a little bit in the beginning, you know, with the recording side, not obviously in, in the the day to day, but that's kind of cool. Um, so what was your strengths that you found out in that test? Uh, so, <laughs> so my, my top two strength roles are I'm an advisor stimulator. And what that tells, uh, what that means about me is that I, uh, I really like giving people my advice, sometimes unsolicited, uh, which people that are having a conver- a private conversation in a restaurant really don't care about my opinion, but, uh, sometimes I feel compelled uh, to tell them they're making a bad decision. So, um, but that's kind of what it tells you about me is this is the way that I approach the world and how people typically see me as an advisor stimulator. And the stimulator part means that uh, I have a pretty good sense of energy. Uh, I can tell where people are at uh, from their energy and uh, I will either come down to match their energy or I might get real excited to kind of boost the energy. And so, um, but what my strengths are and what my strength roles are, are different things. Strengths are activities that make you feel strong. Uh, and, uh, (laughs) which seems silly, but, uh, but that's the case. And actually things like this, uh, podcasts, interviews, anytime I get to be in front of an audience, sharing uh, my knowledge or my experience or my story, um, is a strength. It's something that I love to do. I look forward to it afterwards. I feel great. I feel energized. And so, uh, but learning, 
in that role, what it is to try to identify your strengths and really pay attention to them and see where it is that you get excited about those things and what things in your life uh, or in your work are draining that you procrastinate and don't like doing uh, because those are weaknesses. And so, uh, you know, that coupled along with a couple of other, you know, things that I've read and, um, and just the environment that I worked in, I realized, you know, the value in really leaning into the things that you really like doing uh, and delegating everything else. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so, and I had a passion about real estate. So uh, at one point I just had to make a decision whether or not my real estate business or my job was going to suffer because they had both gotten pretty busy. And right. uh, I just decided to go with the thing I was super passionate about, which is real estate. So when did you get involved in the investment side? Did you do that before you were licensed or after you were licensed? Uh, it was before I was licensed. So, uh, yeah. So um, right after my wife and I had bought our first house and then got married, uh, we, uh, I, I came to her one day. I just started working at the software company, traveling. Uh, at the time, I was actually doing support, but I was salaried now. So I had a big right. boy job. And, uh, <laughs> and I went to my wife and I was like, we should buy a rental house. Uh, and this was 2013. Uh, and she was like, okay, uh, it was, it's one of the easiest conversations I've ever had with my wife. I thought right. I was going to have to, you know, come <laughs> with a lot more <laughs> ammo and proof. And she was like, okay. Um, and, uh, so we, we did, we ended up buying a rental property, uh, used the same real estate agent that we bought our house with, um, actually still a good friend of mine here in, in, in the Orlando community, still a great realtor, uh, Jen Carlisle. I'll give her a awesome. shout out. Um, but, uh, you know, it, we, we got into it and, um, I really had no idea what I was doing. Um, but I thought I could rent it for at least what the mortgage was, uh, and cover my expenses. And, uh, which is a terrible way to analyze a real estate deal, by the way, <laughs> you need a lot more information than just a gut intuition, uh, right. which is basically what I had. Uh, right. but, uh, it was, it turned out to be a really great deal to this day. I still own it. It's a great piece uh, of real estate. And, um, I got that first rent check the first month that, uh, that I had a tenant in there. And I just thought that was the greatest way to make money, uh, in my entire life. I did absolutely nothing, uh, right. for this check. And I just, I, 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 all of a sudden it just, something switched in my head and, I yeah. thought I got to figure out how to make more of this kind of money. Um, and so I took to the World Wide webs to go try to find a tool to help me analyze real estate. And that led me to a website called biggerpockets.com. That does ask you your next thing was how, to, how did you stumble upon bigger pockets? Cause I love that site, what he's done with it and it's exploded. Um, I know it's a lead gen tool for a lot with, you know, marketing and, you know, trying to find investor clients, but it's also a lot for educational purposes for people that want to get into the investment side of the business. And so when, what year did you discover the site there? Uh, that would have been 2013. It would have, okay. it would have been right after we bought the rental. Um, Cause okay. we bought the rental and um, I just started, uh, it might've been 2014, but it, it, it was, it was right after we found the rental. Um, I, you know, I wanted to find uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and I don't even know where the idea came from, but I had the idea that I needed to find an Excel spreadsheet to like, <laughs> analyze the deals. Um, and so I put that into Google and believe it or not, it actually took me to a forum thread on biggerpockets.com. This was before they had a calculator. Now they actually have a calculator tool on right. the site. Um, but I, I just, you know, I, I went, I found the spreadsheet and I downloaded it. Uh, but I was like, oh, bigger pockets. I wonder what that is. Um, and so I kind of clicked around the site a little bit and I was like, oh, this is really interesting. Um, and then I heard, uh, that there was a podcast. And so I went and I downloaded the podcast and I started listening to the podcast religiously. And there's like an insane amount of, uh, episodes now, um, which I actually don't listen to it anymore. It's not, I, I just, it's, I just don't have time. I've got other yeah. priorities now, but, uh, but I was traveling for work a lot. And so I had lots of time to just time I was doing nothing, right? I was sitting on an airplane right. or I was sitting in an airport. So I was, I was just consuming all of this information about real estate investing and just uh, taking it all in. And one of the things that Brandon Turner talked about a lot in the early days was uh, if you want to get started in real estate, go connect with other people, right? Go meet other people and just add value. Just walk up to somebody that's successful and say, how can I help you? Right. If, if, um, and, 
and even better if you can come to them and say, here's how I can help you, right? Because now they don't have to think about how to give you a job. They can just say, yeah, that's helpful. Go do that. Uh, but right. um, so I wanted to find a way that I could contribute. One of the ways that I found to do that was actually on the forum. So I set up keyword alerts. So if people were talking about Orlando, I would know they're talking about Orlando and I could go in and I could respond to questions that they might have. And then additionally, I, I found a section of bigger pockets called uh, the uh, unanswered discussions, which is a lonely place where people <laughs> post their questions and no one answers them. Uh, and so I just started going through there, finding questions that I knew the answers to and started answering people's questions or uh, every once in a while I would stumble across a really interesting question that I didn't know the answer to. And I was like, actually, that's a really interesting question. And I would actually search on the forums the exact same question. Typically I'd find multiple threads where there was an answer. I'd go learn what I needed to learn. And then I'd go back to the original, to that post. And I'd say, here's a link to this other forum where there's all this information. Hope this is helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, just got super active and uh, did that for about seven years, you know, give or take before actually getting into the real estate side. So now were you finding like wholesale clients doing that? And I guess the, 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 the previous question to that would be, did you ever get involved in the wholesale side of the business? So uh, I've purchased from wholesalers, uh, okay. but I've never wholesaled anything myself. I understand what the concept is. Um, I, I was never really too excited about the idea of walking into somebody's home and offering pennies on the dollar. Uh, right. for something that was, you know, that I felt like was worth more. Um, and, and so it's just never been a part of the business that I've been a part of. Um, okay. and, and part of that was, I just had this preconceived notion of what wholesaling was and, uh, take, and, you know, maybe it was taking advantage of people. And I believe that there's a lot of legitimate people out there that wholesale and actually do help people. And I think that there are ways in which you can do that. Uh, but either way, i I just never went down that path. And so, um, in 2019, I started a new job. Um, my daughter was being born uh, and I looked at my wife and I said, okay, I'm, I'm actually going to get this real estate license that I've talked about now for seven or eight years. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I put it off for a long time because I felt like I wasn't a good student and I didn't want to have to try to do something, you know, learn online. And I was traveling for work so I couldn't sit in a class. And I just had all these excuses and I just essentially said, uh, you know, I'm going to figure out how to make it work. And, uh, and, and the motivation was my daughter was going to be born and I didn't want to spend the rest of my life trading my time for money. Uh, right. and so if I, if that was the case and I really need to figure out how to invest more, I need to figure out how to generate additional income in some capacity. And so, um, I felt like I could do that through real estate. Uh, if nothing else, the license I felt like would make me a better investor. Uh, and so I got it. And, uh, after I got it, I started to have people on bigger pockets uh, ask me if if I might be able to help them find opportunities here in Central Florida, and so uh, that's kind of how becoming a retail residential um, real estate agent started. So the seven years you spent like searching, like just answering questions and stuff, you just did that for a hobby, not to try and gain clients or anything. Yeah, yeah, uh, I committed. Uh, so in the early time, I committed to post once a day for a year. Okay. Um, and it was really just a way to try to, you know, add value, maybe create some, real, some, some partnerships and find a way to invest um, right. at, or find people to build a community around. Um, you know, I, as a, as an investor, I, I see the power of community uh, in being part of groups that are interested in being around like-minded individuals. And the same is true for real estate agents, right? We are better when we are around people that are better yep. than us, yep. uh, where we can steal from their knowledge and wisdom and, and hopefully, you know, have a better impact on our lives. Um, and so, you know, I, I, that bigger pockets was a way that I could do that. Um, considering I traveled a lot for work at the time, so I wasn't home a lot. And I think that's great because you spent time trying to understand the business, learn the business and get involved, but you weren't in there for a financial gain. And a lot of people are in there like, okay, I'm going to go get in bigger pockets today and just go start digging for investors to try and sell them something. No, I'm in there trying to understand the, the real estate business and trying to just like Facebook engage and learn and, and see what's going on. You know, Facebook's a different game, but um, we all go in there to just, you know, maybe we'll just see a topic in one of the, the Facebook groups and read all the threads to hear everyone's opinions and we'll form our own. Um, but there's someone who asks a legit question. And then you see the difference of opinions of people 
and you can see like the, you know both sides of the story um funny story on this is my the guy who used to wash our cars he came into our office one day to get the keys and he's like i didn't know you guys moved to exp i'm with the exp I'm like oh yeah i didn't really even realize you got your real estate license and he started you know he, he's now out of the car wash business now he's a very successful real estate agent but he started by digging into bigger pockets and he got his license found his network on there for um through bigger pockets found his person he went into the company with and now all he does is investor business he finds his whole he finds his his end users in there he'll go wholesale deals in there he'll go um he runs a whole like property management division now i mean this has been three years the guy's gone from washing cars to now being having to be in a successful business with him and his wife and they've got a bunch of rentals that they that they own and they're partnering on a, on a bunch of projects so it's kind of cool you can go in there at that site and like start a whole new life it's really well, what it comes down to. i mean I, I suppose you probably could start a whole new life that feels like it's a little extreme but you can certainly oh. improve on the life you have correct that's what um, i mean you're, you're, you're not starting a whole yeah. new life but you're going literally from you know yeah. any other car wash business but it's like you're going from that to like now I'm worth money. Now I've got yeah. I've got positions and I've got you know an actual at, like asset sitting here. Um, so that's why I call it a whole new life because you're going from doing car wash into like working on rentals and 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 playing with a better product. So yeah. whole new life that way, not like oh my god, I'm trying to escape my old life that I that I used to have. Um, that'd be a bad way to say. It. Let's go on bigger pockets and create a new identity. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, so now what is your focus with the business? You know, you got into the business in 19. Um, did you go right after the investor market or what was your target when you got in? Um, so I, I don't know that I had a specific target when I got in, right? I got a real estate license um, and I thought that it would give me access to better data so I could be a better investor. But I was determined to make sure that it paid for itself right? Because it costs money to get a license. It doesn't cost a lot of money to get a license, but it costs right. money to get a license and it costs money to maintain a license. And so I, I knew that I had to do at least a deal a year to, to make it worth it. And so, you know, like anyone else, I started telling everybody I knew. Uh, I'm not originally from here. So that was like four phone calls. Uh, <laughs> but um, when they say reach out to your database, it's five a day. So you still had one more you had to find. You open a phone yeah, book. Yeah, or... yeah. yeah. I only work half the week. No, I, uh, I, I, you know, I just started to try to uh, connect with as many people as I could in, in whatever way I could. And I was willing to do like anything uh, to, to sell a house, right? I was obsessed, Yeah. Uh, you know, during my lunch break, um, you know, once COVID happened, I was working from home and that, changed the game for me the first few months of having a license i was working in an office and when we transitioned to work from home in early 2020 it was a game changer for me because uh you know people in corporate america waste a lot of time and they waste a lot of time because there's someone standing over their shoulder wanting them to look like they're being productive so um not to say that i was totally unproductive but i i i was an account manager i dealt with clients and client problems. It just didn't keep me busy all day. So yeah. now I was able to, okay, well, what can we do? And so I, um, I, you know, partly I was lucky. Uh, I had started, I had been on Becker Pockets for a long time. There's a section in there where you can tell them you have a real estate license and in what state. And I think that was actually somewhat new then. And so I put that in there and I got this email from their premium account management team asking me if I wanted a premium account for free. I thought there was a, you know, I wanted to know what the catch was. They, gar they guaranteed me there was no catch. I said, okay, fine, sure, whatever. Um, I filled out my profile and um, it, it has a little lead form there and, and somebody filled out the lead form one day. Uh, and so I was talking to them and I had had a couple of people fill it out and I would, you know, I, I would act like an agent. Hi, how you doing? What are you trying to do? What do you look for? And so I would try to find them properties and I spent so many hours in the MLS. Actually, I think the office manager at my office in, in Winter Park, one day she was like, uh, hey, um, I see that you're in the MLS a lot. And I'm like, yeah. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm looking. She's like, looking for what? I'm like, I don't know, property, <laughs> information, houses. Like, again, I wanted to invest. So I was looking for different ways that I could build search criteria to find deals. And so 
I was obsessed with finding a deal for myself or, or figuring out a way to sell a house. And so I just, uh, you know, spent a lot of time in there. Um, and so I ended up connecting with this young couple at one point and they called me and they were like, Hey, you know, we want to do a house hack. Uh, and I was like, okay, they're like, do you know what that is? And I'm like, yeah, it's where you live in it and you rent out a portion of it. And yeah, I, I totally get it. And they're like, okay, great. We've got this agent that doesn't understand that. She keeps showing us these houses that don't really fit our box. Um, we want to work with you instead. And I said, okay, that's fine. Have you signed paperwork? And they said, yeah, we signed a pay we, we signed an agreement with her. And I said, okay, well, you, then you're going to need to go fire her. Um, and then once you've done that, I'd be happy to help you. And so he called me a day later and he's like, okay, we fired the other person. We want to work with you. And I said, okay, great. He's like, do I need to sign something? I'm like, no, you fired that person. I don't think I need you to sign it. <laughs> I think you're pretty committed to work with me. So, um, and two weeks later, he called me. I was driving home from work uh, on a Monday. And he's like, my wife and I went to an open house yesterday. And we really like the house. We want to make an offer. Uh, they got, offer got accepted. The first time I met them was at the inspection. That's not how first agent transactions <laughs> normally go. That's not how it normally works. Uh, it was just totally different. And so when that happened, um, interacting with that type of client, I was like, this is the kind of client that I want, right? They, they, I don't need to show them 200 houses. Um, you know, they pretty much know what they want already. And, and so I started to focus more on working with investors. Um, and then for whatever reason, a few weeks after that closing happened, uh, bigger pockets actually called me and they said, Hey, we're starting this new paid advertising program. Do you want to participate? Um, and I was playing with house money at the time. So I said, sure, let's take a gamble. Um, and so I started to get leads directly from bigger pockets through that. And we built a system around how to get them in, how to contact them quickly and set them up with phone calls. And um, that actually became the main source of my business for a long time, uh, for almost two years. It was the main source of my business. And then we took referrals when we could. So now working on the the investor side are you doing like is it your whole business like 100 percent investors or are you like trying to branch into like other sides of the business right now uh so anymore it is not um we've helped uh i mean still the bulk of our business are investors looking for long-term buy and hold rentals here in central florida and then we also do disney short-term rentals so that's still the bulk of the business that we do um but we've we've had the opportunity to list some properties here in the area um we've you know we help homeowners as well We've started to get some referrals. I've started to, you know, network more and build a bigger sphere here in the area. So um, it is not the only thing, and we don't actually use the paid lead gen uh, lead gen source any longer um, because it it wasn't going to be sustainable based on how I was going to build my business long term, which is building a team and having a team of agents. And we've got five agents on the team now. So now when you say long-term sustainable, you, you shut that marketing down. Was it bringing in too much business or was it not bringing in enough for what you were paying for it? Um, when in the craziness of the market, uh, it's hard to find a deal because everything had multiple offers. Oh. And, and, and then as interest rates started to tick up, we just saw the quality of that particular lead source go down. Gotcha. I, think there's still, I think there's still gold in them hills. Uh, yeah. so, you know, if you're an agent and you have a marketing budget, you know, that, that can sustain it and you can figure out how to talk to those clients and, and convert them, then I think there's absolutely an opportunity there. I'd love to get back to it at some point. What, what I mean by that is uh, as I want to build my team and see my agents have a ton of success, I'm more focused on generating business and opportunities for my team than I am closing those deals myself. And so what that means is, is that I don't make nearly as much money on them, which means that my profit margins have to be better. So right. uh, it, it just, the profit margin wasn't there for that lead source unless I was going to close all of those deals. Um, and if I was, if I was neck deep in uh, transactions and new client acquisition all the time, then I'd never be able to step back and focus on building better lead gen and training for my team that was going to ultimately help them produce at a high level, uh, which would ultimately benefit me. So what is your, now you're, you're doing the investor side, you've done that, you uh, that's really like your specialty, but what um, what have you guys moved your avenue over towards? And I mean, this is a kind of a good conversation right now because there was the investor back in 2022 and 2021 who 
you know, would offer, you know, crazy amounts of cash on stuff. And I think that mindset of the investor has changed to where, okay, you're asking 300, I don't need to pay you 330 now, I can offer you 270. And, and those offers are getting accepted. So are you seeing like investors come out, like kind of come back out with that mindset or are you seeing them getting more aggressive? Um, they're definitely getting more aggressive. Um, I, I still tell them it's it's not that time yet. Yep. Now, if a home's been on the market for 30 plus days, then absolutely we should get super aggressive. But otherwise, yep. you know, if it's been on the market 12 days, there's going to be price adjustments, but they're not going to give you, you know, 20 percent off. Right. Okay. So um, so we continue to have those conversations and deal with those mentalities. But, um, you know, what we're doing now is we're focusing on uh, on the database that we that I built over the last three years. I mean, I put over thirty six hundred contacts into my database in three years through a multitude of different channels. Right. Um, but but, you know, we built a big database, but I I didn't have any kind of reoccurring contact with that database. And so we've gone to a newsletter format where trying to play the long game, long game through content, producing content. And, um, and then we're out there analyzing deals and trying to provide those, offer those up to our database as look, we found this deal over here that it's not crazy yield, but it's still a great investment with a decent yield. And uh, just seeing if we can get people to raise their hand out of our database. And then um, we're just, we're always looking for different ways that we do free cheap lead gen, as well as additional uh, looking for additional um, referral sources and always looking to add people to my database feed the beast so let's let's uh, throw this one out there for the new agents in the business who don't have a budget what's the free and cheap lead, lead gen that you're pulling in uh so free is a uh, facebook marketplace okay uh so i go to the mls and i look up leased properties for less than two thousand uh, dollars i then take uh, the areas where I find those properties that were leased for less than $2,000. And I post a for rent ad on Facebook marketplace that says, are you tired of renting? And it's okay. in the price range. It's in the neighborhood. Um, and I get people that just respond sometimes. I mean, a lot of them think it's an actual place for rent. So we have a script that we follow to tell them, uh, I don't actually have a house for rent. This is an ad uh, yeah. that I'm running. Um, and so I do that. Are you renting? Yep. <laughs> but you know, but we ask people, you know, are you tired of renting? And and they yeah. say that they are. And then um, we have control of some Facebook groups here in Central Florida that uh, that we own. And so they basically and they're private groups, uh, but they're clearly marked as homes for sale in Central Florida, homes for sale in Orlando, home for sale in Ocala. You know, we've got them in a couple of different markets, and uh, we. Uh, you know, as people come in, they tell us whether or not they're an agent or a buyer or a seller. Um, you know, are they working with somebody? Um, and so it's got a little lead form in that private Facebook group that we capture their data from if they can and, and see if we can help them. Um, and then additionally, I just take EXP listings uh, and I put them out on as many Facebook groups as I possibly can uh because as lead capture tools right, right. Uh, people click through them you know even if i only get one or two people that you know across three months it didn't cost me anything it cost me a little bit of time um but i have a virtual assistant that does a lot of that stuff for me so it doesn't even cost me time that's the the va is like the best investment ever because you know for what i'm doing like sometimes i want to be the person to handle all of it but for four bucks an hour five bucks an hour i can tell you know after a little bit of training she can take it over and our we've got we had three vas we've got two right now and they're well worth their weight in gold and you know they'll have higher degrees of education than we do and they're working for pennies on what we you know would be making so i'm i'm glad you have that va there to help because it is time management doing that stuff and i figured that uh, i heard my va at the beginning of this year um, okay. actually right after new year, my house got whopped with COVID. And so, uh, and so as I was quarantined, I sat down on my computer, um, and, uh, and hired a virtual assistant. Um, and I think she started at like $3 an hour. I think now I pay her $3 and 75 cents an hour. Uh, but she does all of my marketing and branding work. She controls the brand kit, creates all of our logos and stuff. And so right. These are things, again, they're things that don't make me super excited. I don't get super excited about going out and creating a graphic on Canva. 
Uh, so I found somebody else that I could delegate that task to. And so um, she's been a great addition to the team. Uh, and, you know, she's- who did you hire your VA through? Uh, I hired my VA through onlinejobs.ph. Okay. So I've, I've heard that site before. We were using Justin's site, Justin Nelson's with Sphere Rock, and we've gotten two from him. And then we've got one with uh, my Outdesk. And that's one of yeah. our uh, um, transaction coordinators. So. Yeah, I had heard good things about onlinejobs.ph. Um, John Jonas is a member of a, of a mastermind group that I know some people are a part of. And so uh, he's the founder of it. And um, and somehow I got caught up in all of his uh, uh, Facebook retargeting. So I, I see his ads all the time. Uh, and that stuff works. I'm living yeah. proof. I've bought so much crap from Facebook. But, um, but yeah, uh, it, you know, doing that, it was... It was incredibly scary, I think, initially. Uh, it felt like a huge risk to take on a commitment to pay somebody something. Right. Um, not to mention, you know, it's a stranger and all this other thing, but it's been great. Um, yeah. and, uh, and Angelica is a, is a huge part of our team, and um, I'm looking forward to, to her growing with us as we continue to grow. I mean, it's, it is bringing – it's like hiring an assistant here. You're bringing an outside person into your business, into your world, they're access, accessing your Facebook, your accounts, and yes, you, know, so you got to have a trust level there. And it's how do I have a trust level with someone on an island? Well, you know, you just got to give it a shot. I mean, yeah. you, know, you pay the, you, you change the password if it doesn't yeah. work out. And I mean, you know, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I mean, I, I, I don't treat them any differently than if they were, uh, uh, you know, administrative assistant here right now. Right. We, we get together once a week and we talk about what's going on in her life, what's going on in our world, what help she needs from me. Um, I, you know, I'm constantly asking her what kind of tasks she's enjoying, what tasks she's not. Um, because I'm always thinking as I add additional team members, if I have another VA, then I can potentially delegate the things that she's not enjoying doing to somebody else so that she could focus on the things that she likes and she's good at, and she could continue to leverage her strengths, uh, because I just believe in it so whole, wholeheartedly. Right. Right. No, and that's smart. And you want to, you know, stay in communication with them. And if you keep that trust level there too, and ask about what's going on with them, that's going to help help big time there. So, uh, Tyler, as we we wrap up, um, I've got some questions I want to ask you. And sorry, I'm I'm losing my train of thought for a second. I mean, you you've come into this in the last two years. You've got a lot of stuff rolling. You've got a small team now as as an agent with three years in the business. Are you guys all focused in Orlando, or are you guys kind of spread throughout the state? Uh, so we. We help investors anywhere in Central Florida. And for us, that means Orange, Seminole, Osceola, Lake, Polk, and Marion County. The reason why it's so broad is because uh, we chase yield. We focus on long-term rentals um, okay. and where the opportunities are. And we just see those markets as having better cash flow. Um, I love Orlando and I try to buy in Orlando every chance I get, but Typically, when I buy something, there's some kind of big wow factor to it, uh, and and it's just, you know, I I want to buy in Orlando, and so I'm just super picky. But it's really hard to find stuff in Orlando, and so, um, you know, but but if you're an agent that does any kind of marketing to find potential sellers, you're bound to come across deals, and yeah. um, there are a lot of people out there that will make your life very easy if they can be the only person to see that deal, uh, right. you know, they will make sure that it closes because, uh, you know, good deals are hard to find. Well, keep the first one happy and then they're going to keep you happy, you know, long-term as, a, yeah. as they say. So um, you, you're you also part of a group that does what's called Double Your Income Fridays or Mondays? Uh, so it's Double Your Income Coaching on Tuesdays. Uh, we do free long coaching for agents. Yeah. What what is that? What is involved there, and how, what does that look like with, if someone partners with you? And what are you guys coaching on to double your income? Yeah, so uh, we actually have twenty different coaches. Uh, I coach about how a person can set up their profile on Bigger Pockets and connect with investors, uh, so they have opportunities to uh, to connect with investor clients like myself. And then we have other coaches that teach all sorts of strategies, from the Facebook strategies that I've mentioned. Uh, to uh, new home construction, how to get listings from landlords, um, retirement community strategies. I mean, the, 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 the strategies just go on and on and on. Um, 
So we, we do free coaching every Tuesday. It's led by a gentleman named Brad Vanderwall. He, uh, he led the number one team at the number one uh, REMAX um, brokerage in, in all of Canada. Uh, he's based out of Calgary, and um, he now leads his team there with EXP. And so he, he his team sold over a billion dollars worth of real estate. And so he will jump on and just do live Q&As and answer people's questions. And um, just so much value is added through that. And then a lot of those, a lot of the, a lot of those coaches have courses they've created and they make them exclusive uh, to folks that partner with us so that they can go learn their exact same strategies. So um, it's an incredible group to be a part of. And it was one of the main reasons why I decided to partner with them was all the resources that they had for these great lead generation strategies uh, because that is what's ultimately going to sustain your business is it, as you continue to grow and take market share by getting yeah. in front of as many people as possible. And so having other people that will tell you exactly what they're doing and all you have to do is go implement um, was a huge value add. Well, and I think it's, that's key there because you've, you've mentioned a couple of different lead generation ideas and like, how did you two years in the business want, you know, learn to start the Facebook groups or, you know, do the for rent ads in, in marketplace or, you know, go, go into bigger pockets. And I mean, bigger pockets you were invested in a long time before, but um, it's like agents don't know that. And I had an agent in my office earlier wanted to talk about wholesaling. I'm like, that's an entirely different animal. And you're standing at my door. That's like, let's book a time in the calendar um, to discuss why it's a nightmare um, to get involved in. And, you know, she's, she said she's driving for dollars. Okay. I got that back in the nineties when I was flipping properties but now I can Google for dollars and take the you know walkabout Jack and go down the street. That's a lot of work what they're trying to do. And so um, let's talk about some other ways we can you know find some potential opportunities. Yeah. But I yeah. love what you got there. Yeah, we. I mean, we just started implementing some of these other strategies this year as I saw that um, the the paid lead gen strategy wasn't going to be yeah. uh, sustainable uh, long term as we look to scale. So. Um, but you know, prior to that, I didn't do any of that. Um, and prior to coming here, you know, I, this is the fourth brokerage I've been at prior to that. Nobody else was really telling me how to, how to go generate business for myself. Aside right. from the regular work your sphere, pick a farm, door knock, cold call. Um, and I just, I was never going to cold call. I was never going to door knock. It was not going to be a, it's just not, it, it doesn't fall in line with my personality and, and right. how I want people to perceive me. So, um, so yeah. No, it's funny. Cause I'm the same way as yourself. I, I've never cold called it a, a FISBOR expired. If I got in front of an expired, it's because we mailed them a letter. Um, if we got in front of, you know, uh, well, I never door knocked. I, it's not my personality either. And you know, my sphere, I work my sphere through Facebook and, you know, newsletters and other stuff. Um, we host client parties. Um, that's, you know, a way, but I've also been selling for 22 years. So I have a history of business. Now I got started with my investors by talking to them about selling properties. And I think we talked about this when we saw each other downtown, um, of, you know, Hey, you guys are, you got a property to sell. I'll take it or properties you didn't buy. Let me list, let me talk to people about selling because they, they're, they want to get rid of it. So why not let us list it and we'll help you out with some marketing or some other strategies. And maybe it's something we might want to buy at a different price. You yeah, know, yeah. That you had there. So there's so many ways to find clients in this business and find opportunities. It's just finding the niche, learn it. And you know, like you did, you've, you've succeeded at it. Now let's go find the next one. Yeah. Pick something that you, that you can and will do every single yeah. day and yeah. do that. And then build a system around how to do that consistently, regularly. Yeah. Try to get it, set it and forget it. And then go find another way and implement that and then go find another way and another way and another way and another way and um eventually you've got something where you're never really worried about where the next deal is coming from yeah and we have to have lead generation because we always got to be adding names to our database I and mean, you have 3600 in three years which is impressive um i mean to now it's just getting in front of those guys in the long term whether it's you know remarketing or or other stuff and we have people from our remarketing coming back to our site after five years and yep. we're selling them and it's just because we had enough they had enough looking at my face in their Facebook feed. Um, I don't know what it was, but I'm glad they came back to us in the remark. We know it worked. So, right. Well, Tyler, I appreciate you jumping on. Anybody who wants to learn, you know, about double your income coaching, 
definitely reach out to Tyler. I mean, there's, I mean, that's impressive. 20 different coaches, 20 different strategies to kind of teach on. And it's every week you guys are dropping hints and, and ideas that are there. Um, so that's really cool. And you've got to have this in your background to be able to help sustain and get started in the business. So that's, that's really good. So Tyler, I appreciate you. Any final words for our audience here? Um, leverage your strength as uh, leverage your strengths as much as you can find a, a income generating activity. You won't hate doing it, doing, and make sure you do it every day. That's perfect. I love that. And guys, remember to like, and subscribe on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and podcast. This will be live on there as well. So guys, appreciate you. You have an awesome day.